Hey, story time friends. How are you today? I hope you're doing really well. If you haven't seen me before, my name is Miss Lisa and I get to do the story times at Worthington Park Library. Um, and right now, while we can't be together in person, we're going to be together right here, wherever you're watching me. Okay, so we are going to be talking about a fantastic, fun fall theme. We are going to be talking this week about pumpkins. I love doing the pumpkins. I hope that you really enjoyed this theme. It's one of my favorites. I love the science behind it. I love getting to talk about how they grow. Super fun. So we're going to start with a couple of stories and then I'm going to give you um, in another video, some ideas of things you can do at home. Are you ready? We're going to start with our very first song is going to be the more we get together. We're going to use a few signs for this one. So we're going to use the sign for more, which I always describe as letting your fingertips give kisses. More. And then we're going to use the sign for together, where we stir a big pot together. And we're going to also use the sign for happy. Happy and don't have a fun way to know that that's what that is. All right. If you have really fast fingers, like super fast, and you've done lots of finger exercises, you can do friend as well. And that's a little tricky, but it's like your fingers are giving each other a hug, giving each other a hug. Are you ready? All right. We do this one a cappella. I always apologize in advance. I never know where I'm going to sing it. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. When your friends are my friends and my friends are your friends, the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Good job! I hope some of you had a like guy growing up around because I sing a little low, don't I? Okay, well, you did a great job. I'm so glad you sang along with me. Were you working those fast fingers? Were you able to do it? It's hard, isn't it? All right, so let's see. I was thinking we could also do one really tricky story. Are you ready? Okay, I say it's a tricky story because Miss Lisa has a hard time making all the words in this story. So you can watch and see if I make mistakes because we all make mistakes, don't we? All right, this one is called the Plumply Dumply Pumpkin. Actually, there's no the. I've messed up already. Wonderful. And it is written by Mary Servazzo and illustrated by Valeria Petron. This book is from, I believe, Aladdin Publishing. Yep, Aladdin Paperbacks. Peter is looking for a pumpkin. A perfect plumply dumply pumpkin. Do you hear some repeating sounds in there? I know. What kind of animal is Peter? Yeah. Not a lumpy bumpy pumpkin. Sometimes I like the lumpy bumpy pumpkins. Not a stumpy grumpy pumpkin, but a sunny sumptuous pumpkin. Finally, on a twining vine, he spies a pumpkin fat and fine. Not too big, though, not at all, not too short, and not too tall. Not some squat, lopsided pumpkin, but a glossy lot of pumpkin. Why does Peter want a pumpkin? Want a showy, glowy pumpkin? Do you have any guesses? What do you think Peter wants to do with it? Oh, we're going to get some fun ideas. Ready? <gasps> pumpkin pickles? Pumpkin pie? Pumpkin pudding, pumpkin fry, pumpkin salad, pumpkin stew. What is Peter going to do? Peter sounds like a lot of people around this time of year. I don't actually like the taste of pumpkins, so I don't eat much of this. With his pumpkin home at last, Peter starts in working fast. Draws some eyes and draws a chin, then draws a plumply dumply grin. Helps his dad carve into place a simply dimply dumply face. Lights a light behind the grin to start it glowing from within. What is he making? 
Later wins the most applause and really no surprise because perfect pumpkins really do make perfect jack-o'-lanterns too. Look at that. He wanted to make it a decoration. Oh, I like the ducks. The duck made a grumpy pumpkin, don't you think? Yeah. The end. Do you have any pumpkins at your house? Did you go to a special place to pick your pumpkins? Mm. We went to the pumpkin patch a couple weekends ago. It's fun to go see them growing, isn't it? I don't know if you went to go see them growing, but if you did, there's a lot of things we're gonna talk about in a minute that you got to see. So that's pretty exciting. All right, you did a great job. We're gonna actually go right into another story but I think maybe we need to stretch because that one was kind of long. Are you ready? Can you stretch way up high? Oh, good job. And stretch down low. All right. And keep, give yourself a hug. Big squeeze. All right. Good job. Okay. Let's go ahead and do the next story, which is actually a rhyme. Are you ready? It's called Five Little Pumpkins. And I don't know if you know Five Little Pumpkins, but I can read it to you as a story and then we can do it with hand motions after. Are you ready? I always let my friends pick because there are a lot of versions of Five Little Pumpkins. And this one is very pretty, but I'll be honest, most of the time, my friends pick Pete the Cat. Mm -hmm. This one is Five Little Pumpkins and it's illustrated by Ben Mantle. Very pretty pictures. Uh, but since this is usually the one that wins, I'll go ahead and read it to you. Are you ready? Pete the Cat. Five Little Pumpkins by James Dean. I do like this one because the costumes are pretty amazing. Five Little Pumpkins. Look, the pumpkins are in costumes. Sitting on a gate. The first one said, Oh my, it's getting late. The second one said, oh, what is that? Part of the reason I like this is because that is an idea that could be scary and is not at all. They did it really cute. There are witches in the air. The third one said, but we don't care. The fourth one said, let's run and run and run. Look at them running all around. The fifth one said, I'm ready for some fun. What do they have next to them? They have trick-or-treat bags. Ooh, wet the wind. And out went the lights. Look at how pretty they are all lit up. And the five little pumpkins rolled out of sight. How are they rolling out of sight? They're on skateboards. Did you see what Pete the Cat's costume is? Pretty fun, huh? I know, we like playing robot at our house. You did a fantastic job with that story. I hope you liked it. I hope you didn't find it scary because it's a pretty fun little rhyme. And we're going to try it now with some hand motions. Are you ready? So we're gonna hold up five little pumpkins sitting on a gate, give them a gate to sit on. The first one said, oh my, it's getting late. Point to a clock, good job, or a watch. The second one said, there are witches in the air. The third one said, but we don't care. The fourth one said, I'm ready for some fun. The fifth one said, let's run and run and run. Ready? Ooh, went the wind and out went the lights. And the five little pumpkins rolled out of sight. Good job. If you haven't done that one before, you are welcome to go back to the start and do it all over again. Normally in story time, I do it a couple times so that you can get the hang of it, but here you can just do it yourself. That's great, right? Okay, the, I wanted to go ahead and sing one of my favorite songs related to counting. We're gonna sing one from the left. 
So we gotta get our hands ready. We're gonna put them behind us. And hopefully I'm gonna remember to do the opposite. Are you ready? Okay. One from the left and one from the right. They met in the middle and danced all night. They made up a dance called whoop de doo Then they said goodbye and walked away. Those two, good job. Now we put away one and one. Where are we gonna put, get out next? Two, two from the left and two from the right. They met in the middle and danced all night. They made up a dance called snips galore, like scissors. Then they said goodbye and walked away. Those four, let's count one, two, three, four, good job. Ready? Three from the left and three from the right. They met in the middle and danced all night. They made up a dance called finger mix. It's a hard one, can you trade? Good job. Then they said goodbye and walked away. All six. Nice. Now we did one, two, three. What's going to be next? Four from the left and four from the right. They met in the middle and danced all night. They made up a dance called Bend and Straight. Then they said goodbye and walked away. All eight. Let's count those again. Ready? Four. Five, six, seven, eight. Great job counting on. All right, let's put them back. And we did one, two, three, four. What's next? Five from the left and five from the right. They met in the middle and danced all night. They made up a dance called clap and clap and clap and clap again. Then they said goodbye and walked away. All ten. Good job, you did a great job. Did you check and make sure you had all 10 at the end? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. My pinky never likes to stay down. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, great. All right, we're gonna do one more little story. Actually, it's kind of a big story. It takes a little bit. And normally I would do this one first, but I thought tonight it might work better to do it last so we can talk about how pumpkins grow after. This one is called Little Boo, and it's by Stephen Wonderly. And that is the author who also did, oh goodness, the story about the bats. All right, and it's illustrated by Tim Zeltner. That's going to bother me, I can't remember who it was. Ready? Aren't these pictures beautiful? The wind blew. The leaves fell and a tiny seed hid in the garden. Now, if the wind is blowing and the leaves are falling, what season do you think we're in? I think you're right. I think it's fall. Boo, the seed said to a leaf rolling by. You're not scary at all, the leaf said. A grub was burrowing in the soil nearby. Do you see the little, the little seed? Boo, said the seed. I'm busy, said the grub. You know what else I see on here? What is that? Ladybug. You can't see, but she's licking the little drop of dew on there. Oh, there's another ladybug. This is a fun one to read when you can look at the pictures close. The seaside, that means, it began to get cold. A snowflake fell close to the seed, and then another, and another, and another. Boo, 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 the seed said. There's more of us than you, the snowflakes whispered back. Why would we be scared of you? Poor seed. It's not time for scaring, the wind said. Not yet. Be patient. You'll be scary soon enough. I want to be scary now, the seed said, trying to make himself big. Just wait, the wind whispered, carefully blowing over the soil to keep him from the cold. Now, I don't really like to be scary. I don't like to be scared, but I do know what it's like to wish that you were bigger so you could do what you wanted to do. 
Have you ever had that feeling? Maybe you wish to be bigger so you could go play outside by yourself. Or you wish to be bigger so you could ride a bigger bike. Or so you could drive a car if you want to be way bigger. Yeah. It's hard when we have to wait. Being patient is very challenging. The seed sighed one last time and finally fell asleep. Boo, he said in his dream. Oh, did you see how the wind tucked him in? Where is he? Oh, he's underground. Yeah. It was a very long sleep. And when the seed awoke, the air was warm above him. He reached for it, reached for it, and reached until he could feel it. Ah, the seed said, time to get back to scaring. What did he reach for it with? The seed grew a little sprout. Yeah, what do you see next to him? Worms. We love wormies in our gardens. They do so many good things for gardens. Oh, what season do you think it is? We went into winter with the snow. I forgot to talk about it, I'm so sorry. And now, if it's getting warmer and the snow is melting, what do you think it is? Spring. The seed was growing into a tender little sprout. Boo, said the little sprout to an old boot, but the boot didn't say anything back. Boo, he said to a shovel, but the shovel was silent. Boo, said the little sprout to a watering can, but the watering can didn't say a word either. So the young little sprout decided to keep growing. The wind came by for a visit. Boo, said the sprout who was now a little plant. He was proud of how big he had gotten. Do you see how big he's gotten? Not today, said the wind, but soon, soon. The little plant kept growing and sometimes tried to scare the bucket and the bees and the grasshopper. Boo, 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 he said, but None of them were the, even the least little bit afraid. Do you see what he's growing into? Do you know what that is called? Oh, pumpkin sprouts turn into pumpkin vines. So the plant that began as a seed grew and grew and grew. Soon, little orange flowers appeared. Sometimes they're yellow too. Yeah, flowers aren't very scary, he thought, but then the flowers fell away and a little green fruit began to grow. They grew fast. Can I boo now, the plant asked the wind. Not quite yet, the wind said. One round green fruit grew much bigger than the others and then it turned, what color? Orange, what is it? A pumpkin! Boo, the pumpkin said to the hands as they picked it, but they weren't scared as they carried the pumpkin to the house. The wind shut the door behind them. I'll be right here, the wind said. Darkness crept in above the trees. There was no moon. A single candlelight appeared in the night. Do you see what it is? What do you think? Boo, said the pumpkin, who was now a jack-o'-lantern. Yow, said the cat. Good scaring, said the wind. Do it again. Boo, said the jack-o'-lantern. Ah, screamed the goblins. That's just friends dressed up, isn't it? Whee, said the wind whirling around the bare trees and stirring up the leaves. What wonderful scaring. Thank you, said the jack-o'-lantern, who used to be only a seed. Boo, boo, boo. And the light from the jack-o'-lantern's grin flew over the trees and spread out across the night. Very nice job. I hope that you enjoyed that one. I know it is a little bit long, but I love that it talks about how a pumpkin grows because it's so easy to go to the pumpkin patch or pick one up from the store and not really think about all the work and time that went into growing that pumpkin. So I have a little chart that I wanted to show you and it's a little worse for wear because it's been used for a lot of years by my story time friends here. But I wanted to show you, look at this. How does the plant start? Do you remember what it started as? First, it was a little seed. And it was a little seed that got planted in the ground in our story by the wind, but in reality, usually by people. 
and then it grew into a little sprout. What you can't see happening on top is that that little seed grows roots down into the ground and the little tiny plant grows up out of the ground. And that usually, the seed has to sit through the winter usually yeah, and lie under the ground waiting and then it starts to grow. And then after the tiny plant grows, the sprout, then it grows into a vine and the vine grows bigger and bigger and bigger. We have grown lots of pumpkins in our house. This year, the pumpkin plant took over the whole space between our house and our neighbor's house. And we've had lots of years where it took over our deck, but they are really beautiful flowers. So it's fun because the next thing that grows on the vine is flowers. And then those flowers turn into a tiny little green pumpkin. The flowers fall off and the little green fruit begins to form. And then the pumpkin will grow bigger and bigger. And sometimes it turns yellow and then orange. And then it's when it's ready to go, you can, in this book, they turn it into a pumpkin pie in this story. But guess what is inside of that pumpkin? I didn't bring one in with me today because I didn't have enough arms to carry all the stuff I needed. But I love opening up a pumpkin with my story time friends because Guess what's inside? A lot of seeds. There's the potential for hundreds of pumpkins inside of one pumpkin. So when, if you decide to carve a pumpkin at home this year, because that's why I like to do it here, it's lots of fun to see inside, you can see how many seeds are inside and also there's this slimy stuff. And guess what the slimy stuff does? If you plant it all together, that slimy stuff breaks down and it gives the soil vitamins for the next plant to grow. Isn't that incredible? I know, it's so neat how it was made so it could just all grow even without people helping. Yeah. Now, pumpkins do need a lot of bees. Did you notice the bumblebees in that story? Yeah, because bees fly from flower to flower and that's what helps it turn into pumpkins. So even though I had a pumpkin plant this year, I got zero pumpkins. Not one started to grow because we didn't have enough bumblebees this year because the bumblebees are very important to pumpkins and a lot of our other fruit growing. All right, I hope that you learned a lot about pumpkins. I hope you learned a little bit about how things grow and the life cycles, like the pumpkin. Um, and I hope you had lots of fun. If you decide to carve a pumpkin, I would love to see pictures of you getting all into the gook. You could also bake some of the seeds and have it as a snack. Super yummy. All right, let's go ahead and tickle the clouds. Are you ready? Reach up high. Tickle the clouds. See? Tickle your toes. Turn around. Oh, I'm in a wheelie chair. Hold on. And tickle your nose. Reach down low. Reach up high. Story time's over. Goodbye. You did a great job today. I'll talk to you soon.